Okay, and we're recording it. And uh, let me put on my my earphones for a second. Hey, everybody! Right. You know what we're doing here? We're uh, we're we're doing a little thing with uh, uh, our good friend uh, Josh, who's here, and he's going to take over for an hour where Jack used to do it, and and just talk to you as you call. Uh, there are people I think who are calling. Some of them. Uh, first of all, let me make Josh the, uh, let me make him the uh, co-host for the time being. I may make him a host later on. And so we can uh, admit uh, him and admit Kevin. And um, I think we're, we're going everywhere we're supposed to be going. And you can, you can control it from here, right? Uh, all right. Right, Josh. Are you there? Okay, yep. Josh. Yeah. Yep. Anytime you're ready. Okay, so Josh is going to take over for the next hour, and you can call and be a part of this. And let me make sure that it's uh, uh, it's going out there. Uh, let me see here. Um, let me just uh, see here. I think uh, we'll probably have it. Yeah, there it is. Okay, here you're, you're going. Okay, That's all right. Nice. Do we have Kevin there? Kevin, uh, Kevin, we're waiting on Kevin. Because looks like he's uh maybe uh stepped away for a minute yeah could be could be but well, if we're ready to go we'll go i guess talking to these people and i'll get the hell right. out of here. we'll start talking to whoever's listening got a few people checking in so we'll get them on here get going something we're gonna do just for uh jack bishop so i don't know if he's gonna catch any of this or listening but uh, i know he's been out for a while so just to give everybody another hour of uh being able to talk about some things see what's Let's going start on that, start that couple... all over again because i didn't start your uh, audio here recording your oh, audio. that's okay okay go well, ahead then we'll just start it over yeah go ahead all right so we're just going to do a little thing tonight to fill in for uh, jack bishop who is uh out healing up in the hospital i hope i haven't uh, talked to him for a while but uh in his absence uh they haven't really had a a program for a couple of weeks while he's been out so we're just going to put something together here pretty quick give everybody a chance to go for a little while um you know, I just want to say it was great to hear from rob tonight i haven't talked to rob in a really long time um uh, you know i had talked to him outside the show before it's a uh, rob's a genuinely nice guy so i hope he gets to call a lot more and uh we get to hear from him we're waiting on kevin we got a couple other people coming along we got vernon here tonight alan Trucker Steve, everybody's ready to go. You know, I just want to start off uh, tonight. You know, the, the first thing that I probably want to ask everybody is, you know, if there's anything they want to talk about. I mean, there's a, obviously a lot of news going on. The, you know, Trump world and the rise of fascism, as I would call it, hits the news cycle pretty much on a daily basis. Um, I think that... Uh, I think the fascist party in America rises a little bit taller each and every day. And I don't, uh, I want everyone to understand, first of all, that I don't use that term, you know, lightly. I, I don't get paid to go on CNN and make waves or get people to watch. I use that term because that's what I think that it is. I think when government begins to use intimidation to get you to conform with what it thinks or what a portion of it thinks you should be doing or what should be happening, I think that meets the definition of fascism. And I think that's what the modern day mainstream Republican Party is turning itself into. And yes, I said the mainstream Republican Party. I didn't say the five members that everybody laughs at, Marjorie Taylor Greene or Lowen, Lauren Boebert or whatever. No, it's it's pretty much everybody now. I mean, it's 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 Ron Johnson in Wisconsin who's been a senator for I don't know 20 years or whatever. It's it's the Kevin McCarthy who's been a congressman for a number of years and is supposed to be their number one guy. Um it's 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 rank and file. Republicans who 10 years ago, five years ago, maybe, would have been completely on the opposite side of all of this before Trump. So, I mean, you know, we can talk about 
Trump all night, or we can go on with other things and everyone can say that they're tired of talking about Trump and that's fine too. But, you know, I saw Vernon shaking his head up and down when I used the word fascism a minute ago. So he can, we'll, we'll go to him and let him say, you know, whatever he'd like to say about that. But, you know, that was my initial thoughts. And then I have sort of a list of other things I can ask you about, but Vernon can go ahead. Oh, I don't have a whole lot to add. Uh, I agree with you 100%. And I would have added uh, Mitch McConnell, who's been there for 36 years. Yeah, I mean, right. I think, you know, if anyone tried to push back, they might say he's not saying a lot of those things and all that. And I and I get that, but he's also not, he's not doing anything about it. Um, and he's he's not, he's certainly not coming out saying, no, 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 I'm sorry, but that's, that's not the case, you know. Uh, I don't do a lot of cable news really hardly at all. Um, the the very minor exception might be 10 or 15 minutes in the morning in the car of the opening of MSNBC's Morning Joe. I I, I find that program okay, you know. Um, but, you know, I saw, I heard Joe Scarborough ask this morning, you know, what would it cost a Mitt Romney or a Rob Portman who is retiring or, um, you know, he named two or three other people who are retiring um, in the Senate to, 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 to just get out on television, to hold a press conference, to get themselves on Meet the Press. Any of these guys could do it. And to go on there and to say what I just said they should be saying, which is this stuff is out of control. It is absolutely ridiculous. You know, it's over the top. You people have lost touch re with reality. What would it cost or what would it hurt them to do it? And none of them will, right? I mean, none of them will. So that's why I have argued for, for quite a long time that despite what some of you may think or say, you know, I, I've never respected Mitt Romney and I still don't. And that's why. Okay. I, I just don't. I'm sorry. If you, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that he's not as, um, <clears throat> completely fucking stupid as the others but just because you're a few notches down the stupid ladder doesn't mean that you're still not stupid i mean you know, so on that just note, are not what's your, you know, what's your opinion of uh liz cheney right now well i mean liz cheney is someone that i could at least though probably not put in that in that book because yeah. liz cheney has sacrificed her own career and her own personal gain by saying you went somewhere that I'll never go, you right. know, and if it cost me everything, then that's fine. That's integrity. Okay. That's, you know, that's, that's responsibility. That's called, you know, doing the right thing, being a human being. I mean, that's what, that's what the others won't do. Correct. Then that's what I'm saying. Now, see, if they all did it, then the person who would be ostracized in this conversation wouldn't be Liz Cheney. It would be Donald Trump yeah. if they all did it. OK, but right. they're, they're but they're not all doing it. And that's the reality of it. They're still, the you, know, Liz, you know, you know, Liz Cheney is someone that I probably don't agree with a lot. I mean, you know, I think by now people know that I have some pretty liberal tendencies and then I have some other stuff where I just I just won't go there. So Liz Cheney and I would probably find a few things. But Liz Cheney is at least someone that I could just say, you know, OK, you know, Liz, you and I do not agree on the solution. We both agree that there's a problem. And then Liz Cheney and I could sit down and find an answer. Now, right. it would probably be an answer that the far left would cry about. It would probably be an answer that the far right would cry about. But it would be some sort of answer that moved our country ever so slowly in the right direction. It, it would continue to maintain the slow but steady arc that this nation has always maintained on improvement. There would be a dialogue. You know, correct. You know, but that isn't I, happening. I, right. I could not say that about some of the people that I named, you know, a minute ago. And that's that's my problem. I mean, you know, we had this conversation earlier offline where I think, you know, saying that, you know, defunding the police a year and a half or two years ago or whatever it was, at the time, I said, just as I'm saying now, that's utter nonsense. And, you know, if you don't like the police, fine. If you want to defund the police, well, then you and I just have a disagreement. I mean, I'm sorry. Now, if you want to change them, 
fine. But if you want to get rid of them, well, go ahead and get rid of them in your town and I'll keep them in my town and I'll see you when I see you, you know, but it won't be in your town because I'm not coming there. Sort so that's the way it's going to be. But this, this defund the FBI nonsense is exactly that. It's nonsense. Now, I don't have a problem saying that because I called it out on both sides. But anyone, and you know, this was Patrick's point earlier today, and, and I understand it, and I agree with it. But anyone who was a defund the policer who's now given a defund the FBI or a hard time can keep their mouth shut because they're just playing a game, you know. And that's I, I understand that point of view, but I don't I don't know where the 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 turn was taken. I mean, I guess it was with Trump. I mean, I, I suppose because we've now entered a whole realm of stupidity that I don't understand. I mean, one of the things on the list, uh, I'll go to Vernon here real quick in a second, but, you know, another thing on the list that I was going to mention that we could maybe talk about later is, you know, the, the state of Louisiana is going to refuse to give money to the city of New Orleans to build a power plant to stop it from flooding again when they have tropical storms and hurricanes because the city council and the mayor there haven't come out and said they're going to defy the abortion law, which, by the way, happens to be the law. So, if you don't break the law, we're not going to give you any money. I, I, I mean, we, we've we reached a whole other level of the, the stupidity. Abortion and a dam have something to do with each yes, other. Yes, exactly. I, that's what I'm saying. I mean, so they're not willing to defy the law, so you're going to withhold funding from them. I mean, it's the law. I, I didn't say I like the law. I didn't say you like the law. I didn't say it should be the law. I'm saying it is the law. And one has nothing to do with the other. And if you don't like the law, then fix the law. That's how it works. You know, I mean, you know, so we'll go to Vernon and then Alan right after that. Well, the scariest thing that I've seen happening lately is this concept. There was a case at the very end of the Supreme Court term that they have decided they're going to take up. And it's the ultimate authority of state legislatures with no checks no balances they can decide to do something and nobody can say anything about it that scares the shit out of me because 30 state legislature 30 out of 50 states 30 state legislatures are 100 percent controlled by republicans right now right yeah i mean that that's you know i mean it's a it's a good concern because you know, even if, if some other people don't fear it, you know, but the reason that it's it's a legitimate thing to be worried about is because the balance of what we would call federalism and in, in, in American constitutional history, we have federalism that is lateral, in other words, state to federal, and then, you know, more horizontal, which is governments within their own uh, arc, within their own purview has been modified, you know, over the years and has adjusted. But I don't think we're in a position where we want a complete paradigm change. You know, that's because we can't move too far away from what we're at right now because that moves us away from our system. I mean, our system of government is what it is. A paradigm change isn't what is needed, you know. So, and it's, and it's dangerous, you know, because, you know, as you were saying, you have a fear, I would assume, that they will uh, get some power that probably shouldn't be theirs and then use that power to take rights away from people. So it's a long road to get there, but, you know, it's right to be concerned about it or to think about it. Alan? No, I'm sorry. My camera just went okay. angry. I was waiting. Okay. Did you have something a minute ago? You can go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Ahead. I just the defund the FBI, defund the police. So. Yeah, this defund the FBI is bullshit. It's Republican crap, you know, and defund the police was the same thing. Everybody wanted to blame it on the black community, but I, you know, you know, I, I don't think the black community was at fault for it. I think the Republicans jumped on this and then it, it sort of backfired on people that said, like in LA, LAPD would go to a fist fight or something that was going on that was violent, but not deadly violent as a rule i mean people can die in a fist fight but um and they would just park the car out out in front of the fist fight and wait till it was over with and go in because they were afraid of getting sued for doing the wrong thing for tasing somebody or god forbid shooting somebody when they were called for help yeah uh, 
Do you remember the, so do you remember the case you were talking about, Vernon? Because I don't, you know, I'll have to be honest with you. I don't remember. It was out of North Carolina. Uh, I don't remember the name of the case, but it basically, it, it's, it's an invention. And five, they had four Supreme Court justices agreed to take the case, which I think is the minimum. And, and it's, uh, yeah. uh, it was a case where the North Carolina was saying that the legislature has the ultimate say in national elections. Okay. Now, okay. So I, yeah, the one that you're, yeah, uh, right. I understand kind of what you're saying now. They, so they have the right, I believe. Um, I did hear some about it and then, you know, that some people have been trying this for a while to basically uh, usurp the popular vote in their own state. Right. Um, so in other words, so-and-so won, but they're basically they're not going to honor the electors. Uh, that they send to the Electoral College probably over the fact that, you know, despite who won their popular, their popular vote. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that would be an interesting case for sure. Yeah. I mean, it, you're correct there because, I mean, that's that's the thing. You know, I was there was some other story earlier I saw in the Washington Post, you know, a so and so candidate um, had and, and I think she had won, but she's still alleging voter fraud. I mean, that's the thing that it's like. Everyone today's voter fraud, voter fraud. <laughs> Even the people who win say there was voter fraud. I, I should have won by more. There was no way. I was ahead in the polls by uh, 10 points, and I only won by uh, six and a half. There must have been voter fraud. They tried to steal it from me, but they didn't succeed. See, we beat the system. I mean, what, what, what is this, this garbage? I mean, listen, it, it's non-existent. I'm sorry. It, it, you go to the polls, you vote. The person who got the most votes they won. I mean, get over it. You played a football game the same minutes as everybody else. When the clock expired, the other team scored more points than you. You lost. Okay. You can talk about the referee and you can talk about if we hadn't fumbled that one ball. And what I watch that stuff every week. And that's whatever. I'm sorry. The clock expired. You had less points. That's the definition of winning in this sport. You lost get over it i mean no. i will I, i'm gonna go to patrick but i'm just saying i will at least respect you know nfl coaches and teams who do that because most of them say yeah it's all garbage you know what and then they move on you know what they do they go right back to work they go they take monday off or whatever and then they go right back to work and they get in the, the film room and they get people on the practice field or whatever and they fix their problems politicians can learn a lot from that i mean i lost an election i need to figure out why i lost and i need to try to fix it you know but but they don't do that they just cry cry and cry i mean you know maybe uh um you know uh let's go review that last play of the super bowl and you know maybe there was some penalty they created and, and you know let the, you know what we didn't really lose the super bowl you know, if if we would just had a half a more second, we would have thrown that uh, that ball to that wide open Jamar Chase, and we'd have won. I want the trophy. I mean, come on, it, it, it's, we lost. I mean, get the fuck over it and move on with your life. What yeah. Patrick have? Um, in Wisconsin, we we had a guy running for uh, the Republican uh, nominee for governor who had complete. Uh, platform was uh, to decertify the election in Wisconsin of your know, presidential election. He'd been on this for 18 months. The uh, speaker of our uh, Senate, uh, Senate Majority Leader, whatever he called in, in state of Wisconsin, he set up a review with one of the judges to review the election to kind of shut everybody up and went through this and after i don't know after about a year he finally said this needs to kind of wrap up i mean we all know that trump lost you know this is to satisfy all of the you know decertify people and um the judge who is supposed to be nonpartisan on the investigation ended up becoming 
a pro-Trump uh, decertify the election type guy, and the speaker had to fire him and end the whole thing anyway. And so now there's a there's a guy that um, in the decertify the election. He now wants to be a write-in candidate because he just will not let this shit go. And it, 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 it's ridiculous. It, it, like you said, with a football game, if you win and you lose. Now, there are plays that may have led to somebody else winning, and that could, in effect, be voter maybe not fraud, but just some little shit that goes on. But what we're trying to do, like in our state, people like me, is say, okay, maybe there was some shit that we need to work out on the voting end. And But we need to move forward. We all know that he lost. Move the fuck forward. Right. I mean, that, that yeah. I mean, that that that's what sports does too right i mean the nfl does it all the time i mean the new orleans saints lose a football game where there was an obvious penalty or whatever that wasn't right and the next year they made a rule change that you know changed the way that that could be reviewed or couldn't i don't even remember all the details but the point of it was but that game was over yeah. it, it, i mean it it wasn't right it was but it was over but in our case i mean it really it doesn't even apply completely though because these elections were over and it they weren't decided by some nonsense that everybody knew was wrong, you know, like a play at the end of the game. It, all that stuff was it's just made up. I mean, you didn't get as many votes as the other person. It's not complicated. You know, nothing was taken from you. You didn't earn it. I mean, that's that's part of my problem with republican hypocrisy on that matter is they're all about going out and earning it in life well you didn't earn it okay you didn't earn enough votes you didn't get them take responsibility for it and say that you lost you know i mean that's you know i mean that's the way that it is uh, the, the democrats have to do that too i mean if any of them start crying about this i'll say the same exact thing you know, that they have to take their own responsibility for their losses. Matter of fact, I have said that before. I've said it in the past when when Democrats didn't make gains in the polls like they thought they were going to or they got beat or whatever. And they've gone around with some of these narratives about why it was. I'm, no, you know why it was? Because as many people didn't vote for you as voted for the other team. That's why, you know, so I don't want to hear any of your stuff. I mean. I understand you might have some peripheral things around the edges. You didn't like what I'm sorry. That's fine. But overall, when you add this all up, you didn't get as many votes as the other guys. And that's not anybody's fault, but your own. Or maybe it isn't your fault. Maybe that's just where the people are at right now. I mean, you know, when you say fault, I guess that implores some, some form of, you know, blame needs to be attached because you made some mistake, but, then maybe there isn't a mistake attached to it. You're just, your policies weren't where people were at the time or whatever. And I'm not even necessarily talking about recently, you know, the last election. I'm just talking about uh, overall in history, you know, sometimes people lose elections and they were on the right side of history, but we didn't know that or find that out for, you know, 50, 60 years or whatever. I mean, how many desegregationists, you know, lost elections you know, they were on the right side of history, right? But people weren't voting for them. I mean, so that's that's the way that it worked. But, you know, I mean, that's that's what I've been thinking about, you know, because it, it brings me to my next thing that, you know, I thought about earlier today, which was a lot of people were, you know, excited, for example, that, oh, Mike Pence, you know, he, he pretty much said that he would testify in front of the January 6th committee. And I mean, I get why they're, aroused by that but i almost say i don't care if he does or he doesn't because what, what what's he really gonna say he's you know he's just gonna show up and 
he's going to serve himself or try to by defending Trump, but yet not defending Trump. I mean, he's not going to. He's going to guarantee he's gonna fly you, his own flag and talk about how he certified the, the election. Yeah, I mean, so, that's what I'm saying. He's not going to go down there and say, man, I tell you what, Trump is a dangerous guy. You can never elect him again. You know, I'm proud of what I did, but I'm ashamed of what happened. He's not going to do he's, It's not going to happen. And I know it's not going to happen because he goes on, on television in the same speech or whatever. And he does say, well, you know, it's not right to decry the FBI or say, you know, whatever, but that attorney general who made the decision to sign that warrant, I mean, uh, what kind of garbage is that? Oh, what the hell? Plus, if he, if he down talks Trump, you know, he's if he runs for election, you know, he's going to get trashed by Trump as well. Right. I mean, so that's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, I, look, Pence is on the list of those other people that I named earlier that I'm sorry, I still don't trust him. I don't care that he did one thing that was, you know, uh, what he was supposed to do. Say, some people would say it was the right thing. Oh, I would just call it, oh, I don't know, his fucking job. You yeah, know? that's what he was supposed to do. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's called his fucking, so he did his fucking job. Okay, well, congratulations. A bad situation, yes, but he did it. Right. You know, that's what he yeah. was supposed to do. Right. So, I mean, don't, don't, because he did his job, don't, don't come get me and act like I'm supposed to, well, I'm supposed to have all this respect for him now, you know, because he, well, he did I his do, job. I, right? I do have respect for him because he went through with it. But that's what he was supposed right. to. Correct. And, and through that situation. But but he's, he's done enough other things to me yeah. that he looked the other way on that. I'm yeah. sorry. I agree. On the list, you know, Patrick. And if it was a Democrat in the same position, that's the same fucking thing. Got no <laughs> problem with it. Right. Exactly. Well, okay. I, going back to Luke Cheney, um, I'm going to bring Charlie into this because Charlie is probably one of the most honest Democrats I know that it was a thread that Charlie and I were both in talking about Liz Cheney and it was somebody who was extolling how wonderful her being on that committee and being anti-Trump is and someone else com commended her and said I would even vote for her for president. Now, before I bring Charlie in, I will say this. I wouldn't believe that for a minute because it's the same for me. If there's a Democrat that does something that I think is good for my side, well, good. But that doesn't mean I'm going to fucking vote for you. There's a lot of those, Pat. There's a lot of them out there right now. And Charlie is the only one, he, he goes on this thread and he goes, I wouldn't vote for Liz if you held a gun to my head. And I had to laugh at that because I thought that was a pretty stark statement, but it's true. I mean, if, if you're gonna switch your, your own morals and your own values, over one person one. doing one thing. Yes. And really, Liz Cheney is only doing one thing, oh. just the same as Mike Pence did one thing, but that was part of his job. But Lynn went out of her way. And for those who think that's a good thing, great. But okay. I would defy anybody to say, out of the Democrat side that, well, if she runs again, I'm voting for her over a Democrat. See, that's that's what I would say. I would say I would consider her, but she's got to come up with a few more things to change my mind. You know, I'm an independent. I'm in the middle. I can do that. Right. It doesn't matter to me. So you have, I mean, to, you have to come up with a few more items except one to change my mind. It's great that she did what she did, but there's got to be a few more things to make me change her mind because there's a lot of other shit that I heart heartedly disagree with her on. Yeah. And it's the same thing with uh, Adam Kinzinger. I really like the way the guy is, uh, but there's a lot of shit that I don't like. But he's starting, you know, he's starting to walk over the line and starting to do some shit. But he's leaving the he's leaving the government, yeah. and. You know, that's sad because those kind of people should be in the government and they should be 
walking the line and crossing over and coming back and crossing over and coming back. Those are the kind of people we need. But apparently, they just can't take it. Well, we'll let we'll let Charlie explain his position. You know, I mean, yeah, I'm sorry, well, Charlie. I didn't mean to jump in there. Well, well my position is that Liz Cheney hasn't changed her beliefs. I mean, she's still right. anti-choice. She still doesn't believe in global climate change. Yep. She, you know, she still, she still, um, well, all the conservative values. I had a whole list that I put in that. Uh, yeah, that that uh, thread. Yeah, I can't remember all the all that you said. Yeah, but, uh, but 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 I'll let Charlie expand here in a second. But so I guess what he's probably saying, and what I'm saying is, and it might surprise you that I would say, I kind of thought about this the other day. Then you know what? That I hope I hope she does run for president. I really do. And here's why. That's why I can vote for, or not because I think oh that will will whoop her good or no because I would say wow. I would long for the day when we would return to people just disagreeing, to a policy debate, to two people running for president saying, this is what I want to do, and this is what I want to do. And in that whole conversation, no one had to say, well, he's a piece of shit, and he's a low life, and yeah. what about what about Ukraine, and what about this, and what about that? And just, to just two people just saying, I'm a, I'm a citizen of this country. You're a citizen of this country. Here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to do without any nonsense. You know, oh, she belongs in prison. He belongs in jail. Uh, his kid once did this. I mean, uh, could we just have two people run for president that told us what they want to do it, without what someone else did or what someone else didn't do or any? Just tell me what you want to do. I mean, you know that. I guess that's why I would look forward to it what because a freaking interview for a that's job. what it would be, it right? But let, I'll let Charlie go back. You know, I mean, I'm just saying maybe that's what he's thinking. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just saying she'd have to have changed her views on other things in order for me to vote for her. Right. I mean, I, so, I think she did the right thing with the January sixth committee. Right. I think she did the right thing on that. But that's that alone is not reason for me to vote for her. Right. So perhaps we would have a cycle where Liz Cheney would be running for president and she would get on television and she would say, I don't believe in climate change and I don't believe in choice or whatever. And Charlie could say, I cannot vote for her. But at the end of that sentence, he wouldn't add. So I think we should put her in prison. No. I mean, you know, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I mean, that's my point. He could say, I don't think I could vote for her because I don't agree with the things that she just said, but there's no comma at the end of that sentence where he says, and I think that she's a low down, dirty, rotten, stupid bitch, belongs in prison, fuck her, fuck her entire family. You know what I mean? Why does it have to be all that added on after I disagree with what she said? Why? It's not necessary. It's in fact counterproductive. It's completely dangerous. And in this country, in the last five-year period, that nonsense has been allowed to get out of control and run amok and, and slowly but surely let this ship tack toward a course toward a fascist party rising in this country. Yeah, I mean, because that's what that rhetoric leads to. It leads to, you don't agree with me, so therefore, I must eliminate you by any means necessary. If that means violence, if that means uh, fictitious legal things, what, what intimidation, pressure brought to bear, whatever it has to be. I mean, that's why I said at the beginning of the show that, you know, whatever your definition of fascism is fine. There's a few different ways you could define it, but I'm telling you that one, any one of them that you ask a political scientist or, or a historian about would have to include a, a governmental group trying to put pressure and intimidation on you because you do not agree with them That's and using that operated. using their yes using their power their arm of the law to eliminate eliminate you from the equation through made up whatever i mean and that's that's how it's always been yeah i mean 
I'm not going to go so far as to compare it to Nazi Germany or anything like that. I think very long way, big gap, but I'm not saying that you can't use that as a lesson to understand some of the things that you might be seeing, you know, are at least, uh, they are at least pointing in that direction. I mean, when, 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 now in the last couple of days, we've reached, you know, rhetoric about getting rid of the federal government's main law enforcement bureau and letting us decide. I mean, it, it's just, it's, it's complete and utter nonsense, you know, and, and we'll create our own. And I mean, it, that's, that's exactly what fascist people do, you know? So, I mean, that's what I can't stand about it. And I'm, and I'm just, you know, they're at this. So here's what I would say. They're at the stage of their development where they will not say, well, yes, we're the fascist party of America. That's not how they start for the longest time in Germany. No one ever said, well, you know, we're the, we're the, we're the fascist party of Germany. They, they said everything but that. Oh yeah. no, we just want this, 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 and this. And then when it got violent, finally, they would say, yes, that's exactly what we are. Yes. We, we, uh, Yes, we, a matter of fact, we do want to commit genocide. Yeah, we're all for that. And I mean, and then, you know, and then it wasn't a secret anymore. So, you know, it's not there, but I mean, that's, that's what I don't like hearing about, you know, some of the, some of the garbage that I, that I hear anymore. I can't stand any of it. I mean, look, there are people on the left who say utterly ridiculous things that I roll my eyes at. I can't stand to listen to them. But at least in my opinion, right now, they are, the true minority, the little itty bitty part of a great big party, and no one is really pursuing that stuff. I understand that Fox News or whoever will take it and run with it because that's what they do. But in reality, the people of this country and the and the, the people in their party are not taking it and running with it. What worries me right now is that within the Republican Party, it grows a little bit larger every day. They are taking it and running with it. Some of them are making it their platform. To yeah. run on. I mean, it's in their campaign promises. It's in their their ads. It's in their rhetoric. It's in their speech. It's in it's it's in their action. They're telling you who they are and what they want. So I think when you move from the stage where it's let's do this, but let's not tell anybody about it, to well, let's just start openly saying it. That's a whole other level. And I think that's a step up on the danger rung, you know, on the danger ladder, if you ask me. I, th I think that makes it worse, you know, and, th and that's, that's, I don't, I don't like that at all. And I don't care what party anybody belongs to. I, I know that most Americans are not in favor of that form of government. I mean, that they're, they're not, but right now they're being led astray. I mean, and that 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 that's what you know. I worry about that. What's what's the view from Canada up there? I mean, you know, or is or you know, I mean, or what do you think? Uh, uh, we have a similar kind of thing here too. Um, I don't know, but I, I try not to pay attention to the, much much of the politics anymore because it just gives me a migraine. Um, I can understand that. It's so comical now. It's just they're all a bunch of cartoon characters, in my opinion. Yeah, our last president, he was almost a real life cartoon character. I mean, you know, that's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's true. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I I, I don't know how anybody could take a position in support of, of certain things, you know, like, like releasing the videotape footage of the, of the search at Mar-a-Lago, Mar for example, when, when you know that that could put the life of an FBI agent in danger. I, I don't understand that. I don't care if you don't like the president. I don't care if you love the president. I don't care if you don't like the FBI. I don't care if you think they are the Gestapo. I mean, how can you su support? I mean, seriously, so, someone can call up and explain it to me if that's what you think. It's fine. I'll completely hear you out. Anybody can call this network and say whatever they want. If you bring your facts and your game, we'll we'll let's play. But you better bring it with you because we're 
I, I've got plenty of my own, and I don't know how you could support, you know, something that you know could put the life of a law enforcement officer in danger. And don't tell me it won't, because you know that it will. I mean, if 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 that's your argument, you're detached from reality, because you know that those guys' pictures or, or women, whoever it was, within a short period of time will lead to their name and a shorter period of time will lead to their address. You know, I'm sorry. And, and then they're going to have to, to worry about it. Okay. And, and, now with just the fact, just the fact that they got, I mean, look what they're doing now. They're already making threats and they don't even have names. Yeah. yeah correct. I mean, it, it just, you know, it, it's a sad state of affairs. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, you know, I, I live close enough to Cincinnati that some of the people that I work with got tied up on traffic on I-71, you know, a few days ago when a guy attacked the FBI agency uh, in, uh, in Cincinnati in downtown yeah. and fled north on the freeway because he was mad about the Trump stuff. I mean, that, that uh, apparently that was his statement. That's not the news saying that. That's what, you know, was apparently is what he said. So. You know, I, I guess if you don't think we could ever have another, another Oklahoma City, I don't know. I think you're mistaken. I mean, if, you know, the people mad at the federal government is, is, is what caused that. And, you know, that's not that's not where we need to go. I mean, we can't fix problems with violence like that. Uh, you know, and I know we talked about this earlier with Kevin. And with Patrick, you know, where we were talking about, you know, some of the defund the police versus defund the FBI rhetoric and things of that nature. And we talked about a few years ago, all the riots going on and, and stuff like that. You know, that was my point was I wasn't for that then and I'm not for it now. I wasn't for the riots in Kenosha and Ferguson and Minneapolis and I, and, and or January the 6th. And, and I know because I spent a good deal of my life looking into this that riots, yes, riots and violence and mobs and protests, which are a fundamental American right, were a key and critical component of the American revolution and its success. But my point is, just because it happened then doesn't mean it needs to happen now. It happened then so that it didn't have to happen now. You know? Do you understand that? I'm saying that people then were violent and and murdered each other and protested and and destroyed private property and went cray cray okay so that after it was done we could create a government where it would never need to happen again charlie yeah that that's i think any politician that even hints at violence doesn't belong in office you cannot condone violence you cannot tell people they got to go Second Amendment solution to something, or you just can't do that. Right. That's chaos, and that's going to, I think that's where we will have to worry about bringing down the government. Right. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it, right. It's a, it's a, it's a dangerous path because, you know, it, we know what it leads to because we've seen, I mean, we've been seeing it, you know, I, I mean, there's a song to it. Yeah. I mean, there's stories almost daily now about election officials who quit or, you know, county auditors or whatever who quit because they're they're tired of saying, you know, uh, I woke up this morning and, you know, there was a bag of poop on my door with a note that said we're coming to get you or whatever. I mean, you know, they just want to do exactly what you and I do, which is get up in the morning and go through our day, work or whatever, you know, and some of these people, I find them to be. I mean, I, I can't stand to even listen to some of them talk, but I can't tell you that we need to, you know, break into their home and cut their throat. I, I, I mean, you know, I, I can't do it. I mean, I can't tell you that I'm not a human being. And if I turn on the news and someone was reported as dead that, you know, I would shed tears or miss them. I'm sorry to say that, but I'm also not going to be OK if the cause of death wasn't natural causes. It was murder. Yeah. <laughs> Because that's lawlessness. That's different. I mean, that's, you know, and lawlessness did lead to the founding of this nation. 
I, I can, I mean, we can talk about that some other time endlessly if you want to. I can give, yeah. I can, I can tell you that lawlessness led to the founding of this nation, but that was where it was meant to stop. And if the men who were there and the women, the were made. No. it was to overthrow a despot. In this case, they're trying to use violence to install a despot. Yes, good point. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and it was just, it was meant to set up a system where that never needed to happen again. I mean, they gave you a, 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 a blueprint and a document that was complicated and long and had all these procedures. And then on top of that, they gave you the, the great debate that surrounded it. Okay. They gave you the, the, the greatest debate maybe in history. Okay. For the first time, people chose their own way in life and in government. And this massive debate ensued, months long of ratification in every state and every legislature. The people were involved. It wasn't just the Federalist and the Anti-Federalist papers. You had that in every city. You had that in every state on, on a smaller scale, and you had it all the way up to the national debate. The issues were settled, and after it was all done, you were left with an apparatus to avoid what they saw ever happening again because they recognized that the long, obstinate, bloody path that they took to get where they went was very costly. And they they said, this cannot happen again. You know, we, we cannot, we can't have this every 25 years or 40 years. We can't have this every time someone is in power and the other side doesn't like them, you know? And 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 then they they can't they can't kick them out via an election. So then they they turn to violence. We can't go back down that path. We have to walk only in, that's in one direction. That's what I was talking about earlier. The long, slow slope toward perfection, which will never be reached. So it's better. We but we have to walk in that direction. And we can never take steps back, and we can never you know turn around. We have to stay on that path. But rhetoric that I hear now is see that that's I, I consider it un-American, unpatriotic, because it's it's it violates the very theory and principles of the founding of this nation. And I would expect better from a group of people who for a very long time now have painted themselves as you know the the the, the living the living and breathing speakers of the founders you know I mean? yeah. you know they're reincarnate i mean i'm not i'm not seeing it it's they they're they're violating it they're lying to you about it and you know i would encourage people to just educate themselves about it a little bit i mean just just Ask me or whatever. I'll give you a couple of reputable sources. Choose whichever ones you want. Just, just spend a half an hour one day. Watch a YouTube video or read one article or, or, or buy one book that you could read in a month, you know, a couple, 20 minutes every couple of days or something. And just attach yourself to how, where you live came to be. And maybe you would just have a little bit better perspective of it. That's all I would ask for. You know, that's what people should do. I suppose we could have a debate over whether or not the, the schools should be responsible for that. But, you know, then we'll get into a whole other a whole other deal. I mean, yeah, they probably should be. And, and they do do some of it, but they don't do a good enough job. You know, they just they just don't. And people are are not well educated in that area. And it's, I'm not saying it's their fault. It's a product of, you know, where, where they're from and in our system. And therefore, they are they are not as equipped to understand what goes on around them as they should be. And I think some of them are easily led astray. I mean, you know, if 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 you can watch Fox News or MSNBC for five straight hours a night every night, mm -hmm. could you possibly detach from that for just a few minutes and try to look at it from someone else's point of view? You know, I mean, that's a fair enough ask i guess you don't have to do it it's your right to do and we'll watch whatever you want but i think it's fair to to try to get people to be more open-minded you know because the closed-mindedness that we live in now is leading to what we're living in now which is i find disturbing i mean you know i, 
I don't know. Maybe we should find something to talk about to end it that's not quite so depressing because, yeah. you know, that's that that gets, you know, I understand it gets people down. But look, it's very important. I mean, you know, I, I don't. I'm never going to say that if something happens, oh, that'll be the end of the nation and all that, because I don't believe in that. Some people do. I don't. I believe it will endure as it has always endured. But look, but there's little doubt in my mind that this country could ill afford four more years of, you know, mini fascism at rule. Uh, it just it just can't. I mean, it's 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 dangerous. I mean, I guess, you know, Charlie said he could never vote for Liz Cheney, but I can probably guarantee you that if you hand him a ballot, with two names and one of them was Linus Cheney and one of them was Donald Trump. And they said, I'm sorry, that's your only choice. There is no other choice. He'd probably say, well, I'm okay. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I, uh, I misspoke earlier, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, can I vote twice? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's, that's the way it goes. But I don't know. The NFL starts soon. Does anybody watch that garbage? Oh Yeah. It promotes violence and it's demeaning to women, so I have nothing to do with it. I, I know you're a big football fan there, uh, Josh. Uh, do you think uh, this is the year that uh, Tom Brady craps the bed and finally? Um, uh, no, does... I, I really don't. I, I mean, I don't know, but I mean, I, I don't think so. I mean, he looked fine last year, honestly. Yeah. At the I mean, end, he almost I mean, won another one last year. Oh, yeah. His team didn't win that playoff game, but I mean, I, I mean, not because of him. I mean, teams lose games. I mean, you yeah. know, uh, all the time. I mean, I don't think he looked, uh, I don't think he looked bad or anything. And I still say, you know, that, you know, the position that he plays, um, he is successful at it because he is intelligent about the position that he plays. I mean, you know, part of my uh, happiness with, you know, Cincinnati having who they have now is because I see him in the same light. I didn't say it was Brady, but I'm saying he plays the position of quarterback. You know, I've had this conversation off air with these guys where I just don't understand how these people who draft guys – they get this this hard on literally because oh my god, did you see that guy? He can pick up the football and he can throw it eighty five yards in the air. <laughs> well, when does that ever? I mean, what the fuck's that got to do with playing quarterback? It, it has nothing to do. I mean, when when is that ever needed? I mean, it's it's not. But that's I mean that oh, he can run a four four forty yard dash. Well. uh, good he can run away from people what the, that's i don't want my quarterback running anywhere i mean if i had if i had my choice so that's what i'm saying but you know tom brady can't do any of those things he can't do either one of them he can't even come close to either one of them and yeah in <laughs> but are, you know, are the Bengals uh legit or are they a, a one-hit wonder oh no they're just as good as they were I mean, they're they have had no losses in personnel, and and they they added. I mean, I think they fixed their deficiencies uh, from last year. Not that they had many; they had one in particular that they addressed, um, and they they really didn't have much else. So they will. I would expect them to be just the same as they were, and you know, in the past, I would say maybe that you know I would be more nervous about that, but. When the person who plays quarterback on your team is solid, your team will always be solid. I mean, that, that you know, I mean, listen, you know, Burrow won six games or whatever, you know, as a, as a rookie before, you know, having his leg broken yeah. on, a, on a terrible football team. You know, I mean, so because that person can, you know, control the narrative for your team. I mean – it's, uh, I think more so than maybe any sport. I mean, I, I guess maybe in the NBA, I don't know. I don't watch much of it, but one person can completely alter the course of a franchise. I don't really think they can do it in baseball. I mean, a matter of fact, I, I know they can't because uh, there are all kinds of baseball teams that have obviously had the best player in the game 
and they can't even make the playoffs, let alone win a series. I mean, they, they can't even – some of them can't even have a winning record, you know. But in football, I think it's it's one player can absolutely – if if they play the right position especially, can absolutely just – Yeah, look you know, at the Chicago offer. Look at the Chicago Cubs when they had Sammy Sosa hitting 60-plus home runs yeah. a year. Yeah. They were right. a shitty team. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of examples of that. I mean, you know, in baseball, but it's, I don't think it's as much in football. I mean, you know, as long as, you know, in Cincinnati's case, for example, as long as Burrow is able to remain, you know, upright and healthy, he's not going to get dumber. I mean, you know, he's, you know, and then that, I mean, to me, and he's already there. I mean, I like it because he doesn't do anything but play football. You know, I mean, in Cincinnati, I can tell you that he's not – he doesn't do any endorsements. He doesn't tell you to go buy anybody's cars. He he, he he doesn't do anything. He plays football, and that's fine. And I don't mind when guys do all that stuff if that's what they want to do, you know. Um, I've really ne- – I've personally never understood why someone who had like $300 million would go do a commercial for a car dealership. I mean, how – I mean, I, I guess – I don't know. I mean, how much could they have paid you for that? And then some people are like, oh, I don't know, you know, you get a hundred thousand dollars for an hour's worth of work or whatever. And I, well, after the first couple hundred million, you can keep your hundred thousand. You know, matter of fact, I'll give you a hundred thousand dollars. Never call and ask me a stupid fucking question ever again. Like, will I come do a commercial for you? But that's me. But you know, so I think they'll be fine. Well, boss is back. This was ending in sports, huh? Something yeah. we don't do around well, here. Well, we had to do three or four minutes before everybody, you know, drank bleach. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice job, Josh. Yeah. Maybe give it a try again next week. Well, you know, see what's going on with Jack. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I where is Jack? Out. Is he all right? He's, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, he's not in terrible shape he's just he, he, he had some procedures done had a spine operation so you know time will tell time will tell hopefully yeah. he's all right yeah hope so I mean, that that can be that can be tough you know enjoy, enjoy yourself that. josh yeah yeah it's good yeah, yeah it's good I, talk to people and you know give them a perspective and yeah you got more to talk around. about than i do these days you know oh, absolutely oh well we just pick a topic and go i guess yeah that's what you I do mean, you know people like different uh you know they well, like different the, things the, the, only, the, the, the only thing you don't have now is a sign off catchphrase so we know when you're through uh, yeah yeah right yeah but we'll come up with something <laughs> are you gonna do this again next week josh I don't know. We'll I see. guess we'll see. Yeah, I mean, it's up to him. I I think it's fine. You know. I yeah, I mean, if, if if you need to fill in for Jack, I, I I certainly will. I don't I don't think I have anything going on. You know, I don't do usually on Friday, so uh, yeah. should be fine. Yeah. I also um, <clears throat> we had some trouble with the stream for audio, for audio. Oh. The only audio only stream, but that's because I've never done it off this machine before. But we got that straightened out. Uh, most of the is this going to be recorded right. and on YouTube. What is this being recorded to put up on YouTube? No, but I'm going to put it up on YouTube. Okay. On the top yeah. of my screen, it says uh, "Recording Live Facebook." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, good. That's going out on Facebook. I don't have Facebook, so a... I couldn't watch it on Facebook. Oh. It'll be on my Facebook page. Right. It'll be on the record. So next yeah. week, I can tell you, I, I never said that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I never said that. Yeah, we have well, that's not what I said at all. No. I, I, you know, Patrick, I've, I really, I never trusted him. I, I've never really liked that guy. I always knew he was a piece of shit. I, you can't trust people in wheelchairs. <laughs> anyway, thank you. You for can't trust me. a guy named uh, Weaselberg. That's why I hired him for the last 40 years. But it, he was a total piece of shit. On, Never beha- knew. on behalf of the people uh, here and uh, for on behalf of Jack, thank yes. you so much. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Have All a good right. weekend. Okay. Everybody, wave See goodbye. You later. The old thing is wave goodbye. And See, you. See you later.